Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video, we're doing a bit of an update on the orchid that was suffering from root rot in my last orchid video. Let's get started. I'm really excited to make this video for you. It is the first time I've been sent something from a company as a YouTuber. So it's kind of a landmark event really. I've arrived. <laughs> if you've watched many of my videos then you will know that I often use and refer to a company called eCoco. They make composts that are environmentally sustainable and they offer peat free alternatives to many specialist plants that really do need that high acid content in their soil. I tend to use them particularly for my carnivorous plants, for my succulents and also now for my orchids. In my last video you saw me repot this orchid into some eCoco compost and this is their coarse cocoa husk for specifically for Phalaenopsis orchids. And in the video I was discussing the fact that this particular plant had root rot and I surmised that it was probably to do with lack of airflow etc etc. So quite a while ago I reached out to eCoco products and I said look I'm a UK, very small UK YouTuber and I mention your products an awful lot in my videos and I do that because I trust them and I love using them and they've offered me some really great environmentally sustainable alternatives to using peat and that's what I'm all about. So thank you. And they came back and said, oh that's really kind of you, thank you very much. We are a small family run UK business. Uh, really kind of you, thank you. And I thought, oh that's nice, that's, you know, we've just said hi to each other, lovely. So a couple of days after I posted that video, um, Dan, the owner of eCoco, actually got in contact with me by email and said, I saw your latest video about orchids and I saw that you'd got one that was being a bit poorly. Uh, I think I've got a product which can help you and I'd like to send it to you. And I thought, that's really nice. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Dan's still watching my videos. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Yay. So to my surprise, I received this packet and inside was not just the product that he offered to send me. And I must point out, this is not a sponsored post. They haven't paid me. I, they've never paid me to promote their product. I talk to you about their product because I love it and I trust it and I've found it works really well for some fairly picky plants and he's purely sent this to me for free to try and it's really kind of him he had no expectation that I was going to post it online at all so in my bag I received a little bottle of nature's gift worm casting concentrate fertilizer for orchids. And this is a 100 ml bottle. I don't think you can actually buy this size online. I think this is a special sample trial size for me. So on the back it says, worm casting extract concentrate. This liquefied worm castings concentrate does not work like an NPK fertilizer. It's rich in plant nutrients and minerals, which dramatically increase microbial life in the soil, stimulating plant growth. It's one of the finest natural fertilizers available, nature's gift to gardeners. Feed every three to four weeks during the growing season as follows. Shake the bottle well, dilute four capfuls to 500 ml for watering, or four capfuls to 400 ml for foliar spray. Do not spray on buds or flowers. 
So worm casting, what's that? Well, you know when you look out on a, a piece of grass, um, maybe it's just rained or something, and you see little coils of soil sitting on the top, that is worm casting. And it's great, and you can just rake it straight back in into the grass and it will sort of work its way back in again and help lighten the soil and add nutrients. If you've ever tried composting with worms, and uh, you can get worm composters, then that process of the worms breaking down the waste food that you give them creates not only a compost but also something called worm tea and it's basically what they excrete as a process of breaking down the matter that you've given them to eat. Now my guess is that it's something along those lines that can be quite pungent. I haven't opened this bottle yet. <laughs> what Dan also sent me in this bag which I had no idea he was going to send me were some sample bags of the other sizes of um, cocoa husk compost for orchids. Um, when I bought mine I went for a really coarse grade and he sent me some, some alternatives. So this is the small grade washed cocoa husk chips, 5 mil, and there you can see it's just pulverised cocoa husk. Here's the medium grade which is 10 mil and you can see there that it is smaller than the one that I used on this particular phalaenopsis. And then this one is Elite e Cocoa. So the top bit is just the same, organic cocoa husk growing media for phalaenopsis but this one has got 20% charcoal for superior drainage and aeration. So it's 40% washed cocoa husk chip at 5 mil, 40% washed cocoa husk chip at 10 mil, so it's a mixture of those two effectively, and 20% cocoa husk shell charcoal. So they've burnt cocoa husk to charcoal it, turn it into charcoal, and then they, I guess, sort of ground that up. Yes, they have. And, made it into chunks and added that added that into the mix and hopefully there we go you can see those darker colors that's the charcoal husk and I reckon one of these packs is probably going to fill one and a half of these <laughs> that's really cool it's difficult sometimes when you buy something that comes in different grades you don't really know what you need to buy. You know what the books say. Um, you know that perhaps, especially with orchids, they need that air airflow to help the roots because they're epiphytic. They live up in trees. They're not soil grown things. So they need a, a really different environment to most other plants that we tend to grow. And that's sometimes why people call them fussy they're not they just have really specific needs dan also included and i'm guessing that these come with each purchase of the nature's gift concentrate that you make these are the instruction sheets and it does say up here in the top section important precaution microbes in this concentrate can be killed off or affected by chlorine for this reason, clean rainwater or bottled water needs to be used. Tap water, which is usually chlorinated, can be used if it's been left to stand in the open air for 48 hours for the chlorine to disperse. So that's really important to remember that this isn't a traditional feed. Uh, it is actually boosting microbial growth within the soil and root structure and that is what is promoting plant growth. If you go ahead and use chlorinated water straight from the tap, you're going to ruin that ecosystem that's happening within your root system. So no chlorinated water 
So the first sheet's instructions is for using Nature's Gift as a pesticide. The next sheet he's given me is to use it as a fungicide and because I think I have got a fungus or mould growth that's the instructions I need to be looking at. And the last sheet there is using it as a fertiliser. This info sheet says that to use it as a fungicide where there is infection or disease already present, you're going to shake the bottle. Down at the bottom of the bottle there, there is some sediment, so they're asking you to make sure that is well shaken in. And you're going to add 20 ml concentrate to 200 ml of non-chlorinated water. Pour the solution into a spray bottle, spray the affected area of the plant taking care to avoid buds and open flowers. If it's just the foliage effective you can use a cloth to carefully apply the solution directly to the affected area. The above instructions apply for the following fungal infections and diseases. Black spot, botrytis, bottom end rot, leaf rust, peach leaf curl, powdery mildew, tomato blight, and verticillum wilt. I suspect I'm saying that wrong. You can also use this to build up a resistance within the plant's own sap. Uh, so you're then going to shake the bottle well, add 20 ml to 500 ml of water, and then you use this as and when you normally water your plants monthly in the dormant period and weekly in the growing season for best results. Wow! Okay, so I need 200ml of rainwater and 20ml of the concentrate. Right, I've got my container of rainwater and I've got a very large syringe Could of course use a measuring jug. So 60 ml of water going into a spray bottle. One twenty. One eighty and a final twenty. I know this is a hundred mil. Actually, this doesn't smell like worm tea, does so that's good. Bound to be easier ways to do this. I'm just being awkward. There we go. So I now have 20 mil in there. Before I do anything dangerous, I'm going to put the lid on the open bottle because I know what I'm like and I'm going to squirt that into my spray bottle as well. Right I think my best plan for this is to empty out the eCoco compost that I put the phalaenopsis in last time. Seems a bit drastic but I think what I need to be doing is actually getting this in contact with the root so it's actually killing off any fungus or mold growth left on the roots. Yep, I've definitely still got mold and fungus on these roots. You can see 
the greeny blue bits on here and on this piece you can see the white Ugh, gosh darn it I definitely don't want to cut any more off this root system so I'm literally going to use this concentrate and diluted concentrate and see if I can um, eradicate the mold with this I'm wondering whether to spray the media I've got or whether to throw it away or whether to try mixing it with the um, Elite e Coco compost. Because I've got the feeling that, that that charcoal may be helpful. Ugh, I'm winging it. Right, I'm going to spray the roots over my tray. And I'm going to try and separate the roots out as much as possible. Turn the plant upside down. Try and get this into every nook and cranny, which I wasn't quite able to do with the um, isopropanol that I used last time. that to one side. I'm going to give the pot a quick squirt because why not? And I am going to spray the medium. dump that down really thoroughly so hopefully that will help I'm gonna say kill off um, control any spores I've got left in there and I would think that rather than just keep unpotting it um, I should just be able to drench this through the roots next time I water. What I might do this time is try and add even less cocoa fibre to the pot. Um, just really keep it as open as possible. Okay, well, I, that's going to be an experiment. If I lose it now, at least I know I've tried everything. So I've now popped this into a clear container. That's to stop it dripping all over my kitchen windowsill and I put marbles in the bottom to keep the pot up out of the slip container so that there is airflow and also by using clear container it helps the roots to photosynthesize and that's all really important with Phalaenopsis orchids. This is going to be a suck it and see situation. Huge thank you to Dan and the eCoco team 
really kind of you to send me this. <laughs> Keeping my fingers crossed for my orchid. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.